Hello everyone, this is Denise Love. Today I kind of want to keep playing in my Dinah Wakely media journal because why not? It's fun. <laughs> and look at these fun little bands that I found. You know, as your art journal or uh, yeah, as it gets fatter and fatter from, you know, you putting more and more stuff in it, you could find these media journal big uh, rubber bands to kind of band your journal. How pretty is that? So I just thought I would share that they make these. How fun. And so I got the ones that had little hearts. It comes in a pack of two. So I got little hearts and little scribbles. And I have uh, another one of these journals because when I ordered it, I thought, ooh, that could be fun for a future idea. And I'll just order it and have it. And so we've already done a couple layouts in here. Um, we've done the one that I'm just, for the moment, just going to let it live in here while I decide if I want to do other stuff to it. And maybe I won't. Maybe that is finished. I don't know. But as you get more and more pages finished, you know, you might decide, oh, that page is done. And rather than getting upset and stressed about it, not knowing what to do next, I decided let's just not even think about it and we will move on to the next whatever it is that we want to do and this is the page i painted yesterday and it looks like i put it in here when it was still a tiny bit wet or at least still sticky so that i don't even know what that pulled off of oh right there um so i did put wax paper in here just in case anything was wet but that's that page i did yesterday and so now I'm kind of thinking, you know, what do I want to do? Do I want to maybe experiment on, say, one of these pages? I want to, I want to paint with my watercolors and do just an abstract piece over here, but then I can come back later and think about what would I want to do with this big piece of burlap. And, you know, I don't know. I don't have a solution for the burlap pages. Um, you could make, you could cut them and make interesting cutouts out of it. You could make a window in it and maybe have something showing in the window, depending on which page it opened. I mean, there are a lot of, you could paint on it like you were a piece of canvas. Um, so I don't, I don't know what I'm going to decide to do here, but I think what I would want it to be is something with coordinating colors to whatever I paint over here. I'm kind of feeling like over here I want to do an abstract piece with maybe some watercolor organic shapes maybe some mark making it's just going to be for me a big abstract book of abstract paintings I've decided rather than it have a theme or or that you know that is my theme really abstract patterns um, so I'm gonna play maybe just paint over here today. I'm gonna to be using my Mashes watercolors. This is that 36 piece sampler set, which I am just in love with. And then I've gone through and I've been kind of marking what some of my favorites are. And I was playing in the little uh, journal that I had started um, with the Mashes watercolors making um, different backgrounds and sampling out favorite colors and just trying out things and then in these um, I was you know mark making and finishing the pieces off just as a way to experiment and play with this 36 piece set and so um, lots of good stuff in here but I did I put this down yesterday and I just became obsessed with this set of colors, because I've picked about 20 that are my very favorite. And out of those, this right here, holy moly, I kind of want to do something that would kind of do that over here. And I think, I think those colors were um, these four over here that I circled. And I kind of made a color chart of colors so that I could match up to um, the website, Bert Herb's website versus what these colors are. So I think those colors could be Night Shadow, Tree Bark, Blue Iron Granite. I think that might be the colors possibly. I think. I think that might be the colors because really this, when I was matching things up, it sits like this. So really it's 
maybe, I don't know, maybe, let's see. I've got Tiger Eye, Flame, Peach, Dragon's Blood, Purple, Shadow Purple, Shadow Blue, Deep Sea. Okay, so it's Deep Sea, maybe Ocean Wave, and Forest Green, and Hosta Green. Okay, so that's kind of in that range now that I've got it lined up right. And we could maybe even have granite in there. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the colors that I'm going for, um, I believe. So we'll just see. I'm going to do some abstract shape making. Um, I've just got, I feel like, I feel like I've I have a hard time here with this whole, I need this to be over here today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I think I'm gonna be using these colors and we'll just see what we get and I want them to kind of be organic and maybe running into each other maybe some differences in opacities and this is that uh, cotty paper I believe so it's that Indian kind of cotton paper that's a little different than anything I normally use um, so it's kind of it's kind of different than what I like normally. Um, this is my number four Princeton Neptune quill um, that I'm using here, and I'm just I'm just gonna start making shapes and letting them bleed into each other, and maybe adding some color in there to get some running and stuff. And I kind of want this to be straight, so I might even prop this up a tiny bit under there let's see I need something that will let me prop that up maybe some random little card decks here oh yeah way better because I don't want it to all go that way all right so I'm gonna just kind of keep going here with those favorite little circled ones And that might not even be the colors that I used, or I might have used them so heavily that they're um, that they kind of blend into that deep yumminess that I had going on that page. But I really liked those, and I thought I want to experiment with those. So we're just going to go for it. <laughs> and I might keep coming back up here and dipping more color in as they're wet to get some of that. I have water that's caught in my uh, ferrule there. Um, but yeah, I might keep dipping some darker color back in there just to see um, what we can get that to do and give us some contrast. So I'm just going to keep laying some color in here and going further down. And I don't mind white space. I'm kind of looking for white space, so I might, um, I might kind of work my way this way, perhaps. I don't know. I've got some little dots that I've managed to flip off from my brush, so I might definitely come back in here and um, add in some um, splatter to kind of work that in. So if you flick off anything off your brush tip and you didn't intend that, this kind of work that into your piece of art. Don't worry about it. It's not a big, big deal. Might want to bring some of that back off. Just pick some of that. Pick some, I want some lightness and some darkness. And these colors are so beautiful. They granulate really beautifully. Um, so I love that. So that means they're going to separate and they're going to look yummy. Okay, I kind of want some of this color up here. Um, so let's just get that one and see what it is. And I did not pre-wet these watercolors because these watercolors are so heavily pigmented and beautiful that I really don't feel like it needs to be uh, pre-wet. Let's go in here with some of this color right here. That might be that granite color, but it remain, reminds me of Payne's Gray. Because it's a really beautiful, deep, kind of bluish, bluish, bluish color. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. 
Now this paper stays wet for so long that I'm even losing some of my shape there. I don't care. Um, I just was pointing that out because I noticed it. Let's go ahead. Now this is going to have more color on it because it's been wet. So maybe... Oh, look at that. Oh, 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 look at that. Arr! That one's yummy. All right, I like that. So it is good with some more saturation in there. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, maybe we'll do like one of these over here. Oh, look at this. Okay, I'm already, already getting excited. <laughs> already doing what I was kind of in my mind thinking oh I love it when I actually have an idea in my mind and then as I'm going it just kind of comes together because some of these random watercolor -y, let's put that over there I don't care if I get a little bit on my burlap but some of these random things that you can kind of think up super fun okay I kind of like that one up there so I kind of want to bring that in over here pull that in from that edge and we had so much purple on there that it just kind of sucked up that color didn't it let's just do that right there and I might even I don't know that I want it all dark up there so I might even pull some back up oh you know what else we could do oh, I totally need to <laughs> totally need to get out the cardboard and let that soak up some of this while it's wet maybe of course I'm working so big that might not really work for us but I just happened to think oh cardboard might be a fun thing okay have I have I got enough of the color evened out because I actually kind of like the shape I have going almost to the point that I don't want to um, add more I don't want to spread it out much more because I actually like this sh what we got going on here might come dip some more color back in of some of these um, to redefine maybe some edges and to give us some contrast that might be nice oh, so this right here oh so pretty oh. okay I actually think I like where the watercolor is going and I want to save the rest for some mark making we could pick this moment to do some splatter or we could do some splatter at the end and that'll pull these little pieces in but I think I want to let it do some of its own thing but I want to grab some cardboard and I've actually got a stash of things I've got bubble wrap I've got the shelf liner what do you think about shelf liner instead of cardboard this would just kind of sink in and give us some random areas of texture maybe maybe I could cut this because it's still got enough in here that's wet you know maybe we could just pick an area and lay it down and I'm gonna weight it down maybe with a book and maybe down here we'll just try that and see what we get instead of cardboard okay sorry about the sound there I forgot to put the mic back on as I was getting excited with those pieces but now I'm kind of thinking oh we could just set the water on there <gasps> look at that okay now I'm gonna let those dry <laughs> and we'll see those are shelf liners and I just want it to really just push the watercolor away because it's not going to soak the watercolor up um, we could have done the cardboard which would have soaked it up but I'm just looking for possibly some texture in there and if we just get it where the roundness of the cup is that would even be fine because of our round shapes okay so I'm gonna have to let this dry and I'll be right back okay we are I'm hoping dry the rest of it's dry so let's just hope the, oh, 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 oh look what that did <laughs> oh my goodness look what that oh look at that oh my gosh that is so cool let me see if I can pick this up oh look what the shelf liner does so it's not completely dry I can see that now but the shelf liner um, look at that pattern that that gave us because it kind of just repelled 
the watercolor and let it pool up. I can see that that part right there is not dry, but everything else is. Um, so I might help that along. But, oh my goodness, that was kind of amazing. So that was just a shelf liner from the kitchen store or the Home Depot or wherever it is that you get your extra kitchen stuff. Holy cow, that just made me insanely happy and it's kind of like this rubbery no sticky stuff so this you could just keep using over and over i don't see why not so it's not like it soaked anything in it just kind of repelled and contracted some of our color there but oh, oh it totally did what i wanted to do just gave us some really interesting pools of color just making sure all that's dry <gasps> That is so pretty. So I'm going to set our little sampler. This is that 36 piece sampler set by Mashes. I'm obsessed with it. Um, and then this size is perfect for me because, you know, like a little butterfly and I flit from one flower to the next. So whatever fun art supply catches my attention. So I may not live in one particular supply for long enough to use it all up and then I'll come back to it and then I'll leave and I'll come back to it. So now I'm kind of thinking that I want to do mark making um, with other materials and you know we can get creative. I can do some more mark making with the watercolor now right on top of this being dry. But I'm feeling like I want to do some other stuff. So I'm thinking neo color two crayons maybe some posca pen i am kind of feeling the poscas i've got a bunch of colors over here i'm even thinking i'm not thinking the chalky things or the oily things so for my book I'm kind of avoiding i think oil pastels and soft pastels um because ooh, but we could do pencils you know i love these oily pencils and I love the Neo Color 2 crayons. Um, so I'm kind of feeling like um, these are good choices for my art journal to not, and Posca pen, to not get stuff all over the place when it's drying. Um, and I got a bigger set. I love these Polychroma pencils so much that I actually got a bigger set of these with some more colors. But this little 12 color set is actually super handy and has some really good colors in here. Like I could definitely see like any of these down here at the end um, working our way into the piece that we've created. See, these are right in our color range. So I don't feel like I'm gonna open the big one because I feel like we got enough colors. So now I'm just thinking mark making, more shape defining, and just seeing like what, what can we come up with? So I, I think I like this gray. I also let's just let's just see like I've got little samples over here see we could do drawing I could do some define I don't want to do the defining with the posca maybe we'll, we might come back to that let's come back to that I actually kind of think maybe I want to do some drawing and defining Let's just put this down as we're talking. And kind of give us, just start mark making. Let's just, I love it when you can kind of like talk your way through something. I'm talking my way through it for a video, but I like doing stuff like that as you're working because then you get off of, oh no, I don't want to mess it up. I don't know what to do next. I don't want to, I get, you know, you'll get stuck, and I like if we can call a friend, start chatting, pretend you're talking your way through a video like I am, and just seeing, like, what can we do to get past that paralysis of moving forward? Okay, so I do like defining a few of those, so that's good. Now I'm kind of thinking that I want to do some mark making. Look at this yummy color. This is aubergine. I like aubergine. Let's just pull a few of these out in colors that kind of match. <gasps> Look at this one. This one is um, thalo, what is that? 
Occitani blue, Thalo Occitani blue. Hmm. It's kind of a metallic y color, that's cool. Um, we've got a little bit of like almost like an army green showing out of here. Oh, you know what we could do? We could purposely, this is olive brown. Um, we could, I like these, we could also pick something to deliberately be a pop of color or something just crazy like sock you in your face yumminess. Kind of like this. This is light light olive so it's kind of like a green gold almost i'm kind of liking this let's just do it Roar! right in here oh yes 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 look at that oh that's pretty and so now i'm just going to mark make and i think it's fun to come outside of the color and extend that further than the shape that we created i love that I want this. Let's do this again. I like this. I'm going to do this right on top of some of this yummy pattern that we've already kind of created in here. And this is not sock you in your face. I'm sock you in your face might have been like orange or something, but that's okay. This is working exactly like I kind of wanted in my mind. The yummy little contrast. I like that this you might not be able to see like until you get close or you see some light maybe shine on it but maybe some shape in the shape would be fun all right that's super fun Just looking over here in some more of my little crayons and pulling out some extra colors this one's greenish blue maybe we can come through here and make some extra pattern with some color that I didn't start with but we could kind of work in huh, kind of wish I hadn't left those connected like that but that's okay <laughs> And just kind of see like how can we just add some other interest or something fun that's apricot I kind of like the apricot like maybe the apricot can do some other stuff I don't know this one is purple but I'm just just points of interest maybe this one is periwinkle blue and this one's pink so I'm just gonna play Ooh, I like that there that was on top of like this kind of brown Okay, so I'm trying to work more gold, more gold, I'm trying to work <laughs> some Klimt patterns into my different things that I do since I just finished that Klimt master class. And so I'm using my Zig acrylic marker by Kiritaki, which is um, a nice alternative to my dip pen and gold ink because it's that same brilliant gold and it's a really fine line. And so I'm just adding some swirls and stuff here 
um, as a design element in my work, um, just as a, a nod to continuing to use Klimt's ideas and patterns and layers and kind of continue my learning with my master study. So if you haven't checked out the Klimt master study um, that I've done, I've got that on Skillshare and my own website. I'll link those below. Um, but that's kind of where this extra layer of pattern and the pattern itself is being inspired by um, is that master study. And we know that I love gold and Klimt used a lot of gold and I feel like we're just going to work some gold into this piece because why not? <laughs> so I'm going to continue kind of pattern making here. Um, we are getting a little busy and I'm almost wondering if maybe something on top, maybe some punchinella would um, tone it down or maybe give your eyes some direction or I don't know, just be overabundance of pattern. I mean, I really don't care. I like pattern and texture and this is my play area and I'm okay with overdoing it. And when we're all done, you know, as you flip through the whole book, you're not going to get stuck on one page or one element of that page. It's not going to throw off the whole work, you know, kind of per se. It's just going to be another interesting page in a book of fun, interesting experiments and stuff. So that's kind of the way I'm approaching these. Don't get overly hung up on each page and stuff. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going on here. I'm going to have to keep on practicing this technique a bit um, to get where I want to be, I think. Whoa, let's do some. <laughs> let's just do it. <laughs> I'm going to get the gold paste out because I like it and I hadn't used it in a while. Or maybe you don't know that I haven't used it in a while, but I feel like I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> Which really, I mean, technically, that could mean yesterday, but <laughs> I don't think I've had it out in, a, in at least this week. <laughs> oh my gosh. Too funny. Too funny. I should be a comedian. <laughs> Ooh, let's see what we got. Ooh, okay, I love that. Let's do some more. I need another, I need another one of those. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I like about YouTube videos. You can, it makes me show up and actually do some of my art practice. Whereas if I'm just counting on myself to come up here to my art table, it's probably just not going to happen some days. Where'd I put that paintbrush? I need that paintbrush. Here we go. Um, maybe some of this paint and we'll do some splatter to pull in where I splattered accidentally. But yeah, it makes me show up. Now we're experimenting and having fun and doing stuff that I'm just not going to come up here and probably do normally. And you know, I'd, I've gone through whole years where I've done tons of art, especially when I was younger and all through high school and college. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I could have done that in gold. <laughs> and then there's like whole periods, like decades, where I've done other things like photography. And maybe my painting practice and art practice has kind of taken a back burner. And so I do feel like gold. Let's do the gold. So I feel like, you know, as you don't practice your stuff for a while and you, you get a little rusty in the stuff that you do and I feel like showing up every day or every week and painting with you guys has really, you know, made me get back to my art practice and learn new techniques and play with supplies that who knew all these things were out there and just have some fun. That's fun. Um, playing in art, which, you know, I've neglected for a long time. And so I like having the reason to show up at my art table, play and practice, grow and expand and just try things out with you guys and chat with you in the comments. I love chatting with everybody. So that's super fun. Um, and I love just that reason to show up and play. And so if you're having a hard time showing up, find that reason that you need that will get you into your art room at least every week. I'm not up here every day. But I'm up here, you know, we'll say four out of the seven days of the week, um, which I love and 
kind of gets me into the play and the practice. Now I'm kind of thinking that something over here would be cool. What if, let's just go ahead. I know it's going to be a long video, but it is what it is. What if we took one of these stencils and did like just an aubergine pattern over here? Whoa, let's see what we got. These are those stencil girl stencil club stencils. I'm trying not to touch this. <laughs> um, and I have put these in some plastic sleeves. Oh, do we like that? That's kind of fun. I don't know. <gasps> Ooh, what about flowers? Oh, like a whole little flower thing in like a dark purple. Like stencil that on there. Or we could do a random shape, but I almost want it to be something so totally different that it's like, oh, look how those complement each other. So maybe that, I know it's not the complete size of that, but it's, it's pretty close. It could get us something fun that could then just fade off into that. Oh, okay, I'm kind of thinking that. We've got leaves and that would be fun. We've used the leaf one already though. Um, this bigger flower one, I kind of like this one though. All right, we're just gonna, we're just gonna try it. And you know what I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use matte paint. So let me get over here in my paint thing. Here we go. Kind of wanted, this is Purple Matter by the Blick Matte Acrylic. I kind of wanted something dark enough to contrast what we did over here. And I feel like that could be it. So we are just going to give this a try. Don't know how it's going to work out. And I think what I'm going to do is on the underside, because we've got paper on the other side, and I'm going to be pushing paint through the stencil that if we end up with something on the underside, I don't want it to sink through on that paper, I don't think. And I've got some art sponges over here that we've already been using. Let's just get our palette paper back down here. Oh, so this is a stencil club stencil. It's one of those that you get if you're in that stencil girl club. All right, and I think I'm gonna do is tape it down just to hopefully kind of keep it um, in the spot that I want to keep it in. Might not tape down on burlap, but we're gonna give it a try. Yeah, I could use these big clips to try to keep it held down if this doesn't work. So are we kind of centered? What do we think of that? I think we're kind of centered. And that way, even if this part moves, maybe the whole thing won't move. And this may be a total failure. And you know what? That's okay. If it's a total failure, just think of these things up front. If it's a total failure, we can take white gesso and just gesso over the whole thing and pretend it's a piece of canvas and paint it again. So just remember, you're never stuck. Okay, there we go. I think we're good. All right, let's do this. Let's just see what we get. Oh, I totally didn't mean to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh totally did not intend to do that. All right, so let's just, let's just punch it in there. We're just getting that on the burlap. So I'm gonna just try my best to stencil this in. And I'm almost wondering, like what does that look like? Can I just, <gasps> whoa! I think that's gonna work. I think that's gonna work. Now I kind of hate that it's not the whole page, but you know what? You could actually cut this and it could be a window. It could be a flap in here. It doesn't have to stay a whole page. Just throwing some ideas out there as I'm thinking of them. <laughs> okay, I think I've got it at least covered where it would be pretty if we pull this off and it's not all even paint so I could keep working this and making some areas, you know, really get that paint saturated down there if I wanted to, but I think it's going to be pretty um, kind of being light and dark and I think the mowers just showed up. So if you hear blowing outside my window, I think they just showed up. So it's good. We're almost done today anyway. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's just take a look. Oh my gosh, I think they're standing under my window. Whoa! Oh my goodness. 
So now it's almost framed in really pretty. I got some paint outside here, but I think what I'm gonna do is like cut that out like it's gonna be a little smaller page in the page just because. And I might come back and add to this, but for today, this was kind of where I wanted to, to leave it. And now I'm gonna let this um, dry and you'll see Oh, super glad. We did get some on the back side, but I can always gesso and paint on top of that. But we protected, hopefully, oh, not all the time. <laughs> I tried to ch protect the paper, but you see how pushing the paint through there um, gets on the paper below. We'll just work that into whatever I do over there. And we're gonna let this dry. We could come back and embellish that some. I think the mowers are under my window now. So thanks for hanging out with me today and painting. And I can't wait to see where we're gonna go next in our journal. And I'll see you next time.